Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Israel News Talk Radio's Mother's Day special. This is Leora Mandel, and I am very excited to host you today for this very special show. The reason why this show is so special is because after the break, I have this amazing opportunity of interviewing my own mother for this Mother's Day special, Katya Bolitan. You know, as women, there's so many different hats, so many different identities that we wear. We are a woman, a friend, a worker, a wife, a, a mother, um, a companion. There's so many different roles that each of us play on a regular basis and different ways like when we're mommy versus Mrs. So-and-so versus Dr. So-and-so versus my dear friend versus my wife versus my mother. There's so many roles that we play in life. And the role of being a mother is, I think, when we have this blessed opportunity, it's one of the most important roles that we play. We have this amazing opportunity of affecting and shaping and helping a life, another life other than our own, giving life and helping that life evolve into itself, into its unique self. And the role of mother is such a gift. And I think it's so wonderful that there is a special day, Mother's Day, where we really focus on that. Because I think like there's so many gifts in life, so many special people in our lives, that as much as yes, of course, we understand a mother is so important. Of course, we understand there's certain relationships that are so important. There's certain gifts in life that are so important. But sometimes when there isn't a specific day to focus on the importance of those gifts, the importance of those relationships, we're just so used to having them. We just assume it even if we know we shouldn't, that they will always exist, they will always be there. Another day I will focus on appreciating the gifts of my life, that unfortunately so much time passes and we don't fully appreciate the important people in our lives. If you're a mother yourself, we don't always appreciate ourselves and the gift of being a mother, the gift of our children, the gift of these opportunities. And that's why I think it is such a special thing that Mother's Day exists so that we really can focus on the gift of motherhood, whether we have the gift of our own mothers, if they are with us, if they are no longer with us, the gift of when I had the, my mother, a gift of being a mother myself, and everything that that entails. So just as for every woman, there's so many hats that we wear. So my mother definitely has many hats and many roles and many identities. She's a musician. She's a composer. She's a teacher. She's an inspirational speaker. And today, though, we are going to focus on my mother as being a mother. And the beauty of her being my mother is that she has so much wisdom to share with us because she's already gone through the process of mothering her children. And she has the wisdom of many years of her skills, her techniques, the things that really, I think, think we're so effective in mothering her children that she's going to share with us after the break. So I hope you'll join me after the break with Israel News Talk Radio special on Mother's Day. Always challenging the status quo. Hello, I'm Rod Bryant on Beyond the Matrix here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. I want to encourage you to listen each week, every Wednesday at the same time, for an amazing show that will challenge you, inform you, and inspire. News, views, and wisdom for the nations here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Don't forget, Beyond the Matrix every week, Wednesday, here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Biblical. Be beautiful. Wear your crown. Wrapping is my crown. Do what married Jewish women have been doing for thousands of years. Celebrate the art of head wrapping. I'm Andrea Greenberg from Rapunzel.com. We have beautiful scarves, stunning accessories, scarves for faith, scarves for healing, and scarves for fun. Rapunzel.com. That's Rapunzel with a W. Or click on our banner on the Israel News Talk Radio homepage. Rapunzel.com. Beautiful scarves, stunning accessories, paired with tutorials, support, and a vibrant community to give you everything you need to start and perfect your head covering journey. Don't forget, join the Rapunzel Community Group on Facebook to see, learn, and share your beautiful wraps. That's Rapunzel with a W on Facebook. I love Rapunzel. I love Rapunzel. I love Rapunzel. Get 10% off your purchase with promo code RADIO. Go now to Rapunzel.com. Welcome to our Israel News Talk Radio Mother's Day special. And this is very special for me. I'm Leora Mandel hosting this special show because I have this amazing opportunity of interviewing my own mother in honor of Mother's Day. 
So one of the reasons why I'm so excited to interview my mom on Mother's Day is because I I feel that I'm very blessed to have an exceptionally special mother. And I think it really is special when an adult can look back in life and give that kind of compliment to a mother, to be able to say to a mother, you did a great job. That said, I will say one of the best examples and analogies I've ever heard about parenting is that parenting is like farming, where we have seeds that we plant, and we hope that we will be able to nurture those seeds to grow to their potential. And we have to do the best that we can in order to nurture those seeds. We have to plant the seeds, hopefully in the right environment for them to grow. We have to water them. We have to nurture them, fertilize them. And hopefully we put in all the right ingredients, all the parenting ingredients, and that we will see the growth that we were hoping for from our child. At the same time, there are factors that are out of our control. As much as we do need to put in our efforts where we can to get the best results, there are environmental factors that are out of our control. If there's too much heat, if there's too much rain, if there's a drought, not enough rain. There are factors just in planting as in parenting that are out of our control and can have an effect on the results of the growth of that seed. The seed itself may not be what we expected. Its growth potential inherently may be different no matter how much effort we put in. That What we expect may not be what we are given. At the same time, I think there really are certain parenting techniques and perspectives that, especially for the part that we can do, that we can try and put in to hope that we will get the best result in the growth of our children there are certain techniques and perspectives that really can be helpful in nurturing that seed to its full potential. And I would say that my mother is really an expert. She has the experience of being a mother for many years, now a grandmother. And there's so much to learn first to appreciate. This is what Mother's Day is all about, appreciating our mothers, but also to learn from mothers, seasoned mothers. What are the perspectives and what are the tools that they use that helped those seeds nurture to their full potential. Although I'd say I'm still working on myself as an adult. But mom, what I want to ask you today is for some of your wisdom as a mother, what would you say are some of the parenting perspectives and tools that you used in raising your children that really helped you, you see, again, looking back even years later, that you see were the tools that really helped nurture us into who we are today? First of all, Leora, I would like to thank you for the privilege and the absolute pleasure the gift that you're giving me on Mother's Day by having this interview. So thank you so much. In answering your question, it's multi-level. It's a multi-dimensional project because I feel the first thing in order to be an effective parent is that you have to have been an effective individual in your own right. I'll just give you an example from our Torah, from the, from the Genesis where it speaks about Noah in the chapter of Noah. And it says at the very beginning, Noah was a righteous person. He goes, these are the descendants of Noah. But rather than telling you who his children are, it tells you about Noah. He's righteous. He walks with God. And then it enumerates the names of his children. So from this idea, our sages teach us chapters that are so relevant to a parent at any point in life. First, you have to create light within yourself. You have to get rid of, through a lot of hard work and contemplation, any negativity within yourself towards others. And you have to work on it every day and every moment throughout your day because you see your child through the lens that you see yourself. So if a parent has a negative idea about who they are, that they're incompetent, that they feel guilty about anything they did in their past, if they're regretful, if they lack confidence in their ability to make effective choices, this is going to affect the quality of the parenting. So sometimes we don't have a chance to do it before we become a parent, but I believe that good parenting skills are totally dependent upon a person's daily, throughout the day, working on having a higher opinion of themselves. And if they don't, taking measures to elevate their self-image. Hmm. So really, being a good parent actually starts with being the best person I can be and working on that actively. Yes. yes. And also, one thing also I was thinking about, there are many parents out there that are no longer actively parenting. You are still a parent even when your child is no longer living in your home. Even if you've successfully parented and your children are doing well, or if they're not meeting your expectations. But there's another aspect also. We are for a lifetime parenting ourselves because 
again, I'm going to glean some insights from this iconic line in our Torah in the Old Testament for our non-Jewish listeners. It first tells you a little bit about Noah, even after it tells you about his descendants, but doesn't enumerate their names. It tells you he walked with God and he was righteous. So I was thinking deeply about this, that even if a person hasn't had the success in parenting that they started up hoping, everybody thought that they would be outstanding, patient, educated, wonderful parents, and that as a result, they'd have incredible offspring. It doesn't always work out that way. But nevertheless, there is no end to our obligation to continue actualizing our potential. It's kind of like the fruits on a tree, that even though we finish the stage of life where we're actively parenting, there is no end in life where you're parenting yourself or reparenting. Even imagine, let's say, a parent didn't have such a wonderful parent and that their parent made a lot of mistakes and in a sense even damaged them. Well, at a certain point in life, we have to rewrite the storyline that we live by about whatever my mom or my father didn't do and whatever they did do that caused me not to be what I would have liked to have been. That has to be totally rewritten and you have to adapt a positive narrative, looking at it as a stepping stone as to now reparent yourself. What would you have done differently and become that parent that you may have not been fortunate to have when you were a child. Hmm. What you're saying really is so powerful and insightful because at any stage, whatever stage we are at in the parenting process, whether we have young children, older children, adult children, we're consistently needing to be parenting ourselves within the parenting of others. And if anything, I think it's the role of parenting others that changes over time. Your child when they're three is going to be different parenting than when they're 13 than when they're 33. But the parenting of ourself is pretty much consistent throughout of recognizing I need to elevate myself, get nurture myself in the ways that maybe I didn't receive when I was younger, or maybe I did receive when I was younger. But as an adult, I have to continue to do that for myself. For sure. And rather than blaming parents, oh, I'm a nervous parent, or I'm a screamer because my mother or my father was a screamer, or I'm a hitter because I remember when I was growing up, my mother or my father would slap me whenever they got nervous. And this is just the way I do things. I can't help myself. Or I don't have time for my kids because my parents never had time. I mean, any of the excuses that we can put upon our upbringings that cause us to think, well, I do the same thing. This is the way things were in my home. This is the way my family did it. Uh Uh-uh. When you become a parent for the first time, it's time to create a new image and to start a new culture that hopefully, if it was a good culture you came from, will continue all of the positive parenting skills. But if it wasn't ideal, you have to do the best that you can to create a new model. Hmm. And that really brings me to something that I've picked up on and we've discussed before now that I'm a mother myself. We discuss what were the tools that you used when you were parenting your children, myself and my brother. And you always spoke about the idea of proactive parenting as opposed to reactive parenting, that you're not just reacting to what's happening, but you're proactive taking steps even ahead of the game. Can you want to expand upon that, what your whole philosophy that you've really lived by and, and I'm trying to integrate myself? Well, like everything, especially when it comes to health care, with our bodies, we try to be proactive. We try to nurture ourselves, exercise vitamins, try to be positive minded, listen to positive information. And likewise, when it comes to children, because I was simultaneously parenting myself and trying to elevate my own level or standard of what it means to be a good person, what it means to be a person who lives life with a mission, with a purpose, what does it mean to be a person who is a believer in God and who's a part of a nation and a community, all of these things can be addressed. I recognize that rather than wait for a problem to take place, you want to try to be proactive. So for example, just to give you a practical explanation, when my children were getting into the stage of puberty and adolescence where the hormones were starting to change. And I realized that I was no longer the only influence in their life. They had friends. There was all kinds of outside influences that I could no longer totally control. 
I chose to start exposing my children to some of what I considered dangers um, proactively by taking them and going places where these things really existed to show them uh, an example. I was always concerned, God forbid, that my children would get involved, who knows, drinking, drugs, promiscuity, which is everybody's concern. And again, my daughter and my, my, my children were raised in a Torah observant home, but we're not exempt always. There's always those exceptions to the rule. So I chose to take my children to places where they would see the end result of making bad choices. I took them to a concert where people were stoned and I took them to places where they could see what it looks like to be drunk, but they were with me. And I wanted them to be aware that this is what a person looks like when they are crossing over boundaries, overindulging, and even though they may not see themselves as looking so out of control and, and wacky, what does it look like to you? And then we would discuss it. Mm. And I recall that, actually, there were times we went to a concert and we saw people who were drunk and this was around us. Instead of just pretending like it didn't exist, you would be proactive and you'd say, look, these people are drunk. Do you see how they're acting ridiculous? They don't even realize it. This is what happens. They don't even realize what happens to them. Look what happens if you drink too much alcohol. And it was a real example of seeing what happens when we lose ourselves. Again, proactive parenting. When we return, our Mother's Day special with advice and insights from my own mother. Shalom, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. Hello and welcome back to the Mother's Day special, Israel News Talk Radio, where I'm Leora Mandel, having an amazing opportunity of interviewing my own mother and gaining insights and wisdom from her mothering. And right before the break, Mom, you were talking, we were talking about proactive versus reactive parenting. And one of the things that we've discussed now that I'm a mother myself and that I recall looking back as now I'm an adult looking back as a child is that you were definitely a proactive mother instead of waiting for situations to come up, which I think a lot of these situations that we're talking about here, drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, I think I've even seen research that these are the most important topics parents usually are uncomfortable and don't even discuss with their children because they're just uncomfortable with it. The question is, where are you learning about these things? And, you, you know, someone can warn you about it. But what my mom would do is we would be in situations where we would see, for example, someone drunk, losing themselves. You would see examples of people that were high and acting out in inappropriate ways. Or there'd be a newspaper article or something in the news that would come up and you would proactively discuss, this is, how, look at how unfortunate this person has destroyed their life, the dangers of drugs, the dangers of alcohol. I even recall once we were at an amusement park and we were seeing a very, probably very young teenagers they were all over each other and you talked about well on the one hand there's feelings that people have but where will those feelings go and openly discussing subjects bringing them putting them out on the table so that instead of the values being instilled wherever we'd pick them up you were proactively bringing issues on the table and we discuss them absolutely i recall when you were you know 14 15 and some of your friends were sneaking around having some boyfriends and so on behind their parents' back. And when I was aware of this, I remember taking you to a local amusement park and specifically standing behind a couple, a boy and a girl that, you know, very big uh, public displays of affection, may I say, you know, those words. And I remember afterwards, oftentimes, you know, you'd be standing in line, no one's going to say anything, you pretend you didn't see it. I brought up the topic about Leora, um, before she finally is able to be in a committed relationship. And every single time the relationship ends, a part of her is her heart is being broken. Do you want to have to be in a situation like this? Or would you prefer to uh, delay being in a relationship until you're at an age where you can actually act upon it and uh, make it into a commitment that would last a lifetime? 
So I see what you did in terms of the proactivity, the putting the topics on the table, the exposure, but exposure again under your care, under your guidance, where we discuss what we saw, what was going on as very effective in probably saving me from a lot of trial and error myself. Because on the one hand, sometimes, yeah, part of parenting is your children are going to make mistakes and they have to learn from them. But some mistakes like drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, wrong relationships, the price tag is way too high. And we, as much as we can, we would like our children to avoid those things. But you had a very interesting approach approach of a certain amount of exposure, but it was controlled because you were with us when that exposure was taking place and those discussions were taking place, which reminds me of, I think I would say another um, parenting tool that you used that I think isn't necessarily what we call a common parenting tool, but I would also say it was very effective. And I'll put it this way, but I know mom, you'll explain it. You'd set us up for disappointment. You'd set us up for frustration. Now, most parents, I think when they hear this, they're like, well, why would you're trying to protect our children from frustration and disappointment? So mom, why would you set us up for frustration and disappointment? I was just going to mention it. So you were reading my mind. I used this technique at different stages of your life, even from the time that you were toddlers um, through every, almost every year of your school life, I would devise different things that were appropriate for what your life was like at the time and try to set up a situation to frustrate you. And I did it because I was very aware that it's necessary for a person to develop coping skills and not to be the type of mother who's always going to rescue you and help you solve your problems and not allow you to develop grit and what I call spiritual resistance, which is similar to building muscle, where we have to incrementally raise the bar. So at every point in life where you were, I would set up little situations between you and your brother. See, and I was almost watching just to see what you do. And then afterwards, I would make sure at the appropriate time to step in and help you deal with your situation. Oftentimes it would be denying you things you wanted or telling you no about something that everybody else was doing. I mean, I'm sure there were many examples of that, but yes. But I will add in that I'm sure at the time, in fact, I have certain memories of the time being very upset. But as an adult, I look back and see the wisdom that you had in that. And I think one of the reasons why you were so successful is because you were a very loving parent. We had a lot of love, a lot of connection, a lot of building. So as much as there were times where there would be, as you say, the answer is no, and I had to learn how to deal with that, or maybe I'd want something and I'd be frustrated, or just there's the natural situations of frustration. Sometimes parents like to step in and solve everyone's problems, call the friend, call the teacher, call. You'd have me work things out on my own, or just this is life. Sure. You have to, you know, there's a part of a parent, I think nowadays we all understand you want to save your child from that frustration, but you would even allow the natural frustration to kick in because life as an adult, and I, I appreciate that now as an adult, because we have to sometimes have unpleasant feelings and learn how to live with ourselves with those unpleasant feelings. And we deal with frustrating situations as adults. We're not going to have a mother come and step in and smooth it over for us. And that I think has given me tremendous strength and also happiness in life because life isn't always wonderful. There's challenging, there's disappointments. And if we can be okay with those disappointments, because when we were younger, we had to learn how to deal with them. Then as an adult, we doesn't necessarily shake up our happiness scale. So it is very interesting how, again, there's certain things that as a child, we may not enjoy, we may not like, we may be unhappy with, but as an adult, we can look back and we can really see the wisdom of it and see how we're so much better off today for those experiences. Can I add one more thing that I'll reveal to you now as a, as a mother yourself? Yes, please do. I also, part of these setup situations, if you'll recall, involved you and your brother having journals. And I encouraged you to have quiet time to write in your journal. But what you didn't know is during the day when you both were at school, your mother would go into your drawers where you hid your journals, and I'd read exactly what you wrote. And I did that so I'd have a gauge of what was going on in your inner world, in your life. Sometimes I'd even tell you stories, made up stories about some fictitious teenager who was going through a situation with a friend or had a, was in a moral dilemma. To be honest, um, somebody stole, somebody said something that wasn't true, all these different situations that you could possibly encounter. And I would make it in the third person. But it was really referring to something that you yourself were experiencing. But I would always delay like a week or two 
so that it wouldn't seem as if mom knew about it immediately after it happened. And I want to say that even at the time, even though some people might have thought that it was not proper of me to go into the private world and infringe upon the privacy that my child has, having a journal and keeping it in the drawer, I had to weigh the alternatives because I was seeing around us in the environment, which was a really good environment, but still all of these situations that parents had no idea what was going on with their kids and finally found out after something negative took place and then they'd have to have a reaction. This was part of being proactive. Hmm. I knew what was going on and I felt as a parent, I have a right to know what's going on in my child's life. I always felt that way. Well, I can definitely add that in. Had I been aware of that when I was younger, I'm sure I would not have been happy. But at the same time, there's a perspective of you can look back as an adult to understand the wisdom of of what you were doing. I want to bring up another situation. This one may sound more benign, but I still think it's important. I know, and you explained some of these things to me when I was older, just like you're explaining now some of these techniques. Um, that, and I do recall this, you'd often, we'd go shopping and there'd be four outfits that I'd like, or four shirts, four skirts, whatever it might've been. And you'd say, you have to pick two. And you'd say to me, and as an adult, you once told me, I could have bought you all four, but I wanted you to learn how to make a decision. And I think you even said this came that you had a hard time making decisions when you were younger and you wanted to create situations, even relatively benign situations like shopping, where you can't have it all. You have to make a decision so that you can, I could gain confidence in my own decision-making skills. And I also see that very much as proactive parenting. And I see the wisdom in that. And I also recognize now the fact that I thank God most of the time do have a relatively easy ability to make a decision and stick with it. It's I'm sure came very much from, and, and that's just a small example of different situations that you would set up where you'd give me this opportunity to need to make a decision instead of just deciding for me or saying, I'll do it all for you. Interesting that you bring that up because now I can tell you as your mother, one of the challenges that I was working on at the same time I was working on parenting skills was that I had certain lacks, certain uh, deficiencies in my own character that were never truly addressed. And one of them was, is that I always dreaded decisions and had a big problem making decisions. I would have been the person who would have bought all four rather than have to choose out of the two. So I wanted to do everything I could to make sure I didn't pass that defect to you. And again, proactively, and I was working on myself at the same time. So you didn't realize that, but I think that as a parent, we always aspire to help the next generation be better than we were. Hmm. And yeah. What's powerful about your example of working on yourself at the same time, and we want things to be better for our children. So often, I think we hear this from a material sense. Oh, when I was younger, I struggled. I had to work hard. I want to make it easy for my children. And the irony is that in many cases, when we make things too easy for our children and we give them everything, then we're often disappointed with the results because it's learning how to deal with frustration, learning how to work hard, learning a work ethic, feeling we feel have a real sense of self-esteem when we actually have to work to get something, when we have a sense of confidence, when there's struggle and resistance and we can overcome it, and then we can feel good about ourselves, not when it's so easy. So I think today so often you hear parents wanting to make it easier for their children and better in that sense, but that actually... I think can be somewhat destructive for a child. Whereas what you were talking about doing is in, in the moral sense, in the decision-making sense, in a sense of character saying, you know, this is something I struggle with for myself. I want to give my child opportunities to work on this when they're younger, because this is um, going to help them as an adult have an easier life and have a more fulfilling life and a better sense of self. So that's another one of your very powerful techniques. When we return, Mother's Day special, Israel News Talk Radio, my interview with my own mother. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel. Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound, the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, 
promotes spiritual growth and personal power. Welcome back to our Mother's Day special. This is Leora Mandel with a wonderful opportunity of interviewing my own mother, Katya Bolotin, on this Mother's Day. Mom, another big thing that I, you know, and I think about, there's so many things, and we could have multiple shows talking about um, what it was like to be your daughter as an adult as I look back on experiences, um, understanding you more now, a different perspective. I think when we're children, we understand our parents in one way. When we look back, we have a different perspective as an adult in even revisiting certain issues that we recall when we were younger. Now as an adult, as now that I'm mothering my own children, um, and really thinking, what was it about your skills? What was it about what you really instilled in me? Um, that carries on with me even today. And where do I see myself even carrying on so many of these um, parenting skills that you instilled in me in raising me in my own children? And a big theme that keeps coming up, and I really see that it is, I think, the core of so much of my own ability to enjoy my life and have a sense of true happiness in life is gratitude. You really, really Mm -hmm. focused on instilling a sense of gratitude. And I'll give you examples. Um, There's many, but two specific ones. I know every single night before we went to sleep, you'd say, what are you grateful that happened? What are you grateful? What do you want to thank Hashem for that happened to you today? What are you grateful for today? And it would make us think over our day and find something positive to end the day with. Um, There'd be times we'd take a walk. This happened many a time. And you'd say, Leora, does anything hurt you right now? And I'd say, no. And you'd say, well, stop and thank Hashem for that. Thank God for that. Appreciate that. And you do all sorts of things to really instill gratitude. Was that something that came natural to you or was that also part of the proactive parenting or something you were working on? I definitely see the results as being very positive, but where was that coming from? Were you consciously, I mean, it it was a big theme in our lives. So where was it coming from? It was, again, parallel with the work I was doing on my own character at the same time. Exactly the things that I was aspiring towards becoming more aware of and developing what I call spiritual grit, which is the same thing as when you're developing muscle. You have to continually raise the bar incrementally, but also gratitude is that. We can start to lapse into just a feeling of same old, same old, taking things for granted, taking our lives and all the people in our lives for granted. Um, So no, I was working on myself and as an overflow of my own inner work, simultaneously, I was mirroring it in the way I was talking to you. Hmm. And what is so powerful, you know, I was thinking there's so much we don't remember from childhood and the things that we do, right? Hopefully, sometimes I think it's the things that were very hurtful or painful, but hopefully most of the time it's the positive and the good things. And again, the fact is I was thinking about this show, um, what did I want to focus on and and realizing that gratitude definitely was a huge theme and that I really realized today how much it is a part of me and that you were instilling that in me. And it is interesting to hear that you're saying that you were working on it in yourself at the same time. So it goes back to what I said before the last segment is that it's very powerful for us to realize, like I'll oftentimes tell the kids, mommy has a lot to work on herself. I'm not perfect. And I think that many a time saves me when I make mistakes. I think I want them to understand from a young age that even as an adult, there's things that you're going to work on to be the better version of yourself. But I oftentimes tell them that the more work you can do in certain areas when you're younger, the easier it will be for you when you're older. And now I'm hearing you explain this is the second time where you're sharing that you yourself were working on some of the things that you instilled in us. So I got the benefit of from a very young age being inculcated with making good decisions, trying to make good decisions, my own decisions of gratitude. And you're saying as an adult, you were, as you were talking about before, parenting yourself with the very things that you were parenting us with at the same time simultaneously. We are all works in progress, as the saying goes, but even more so, we only have one chance to be able to actualize the potential that we have. And that also is an important element in child rearing. Our child, we have no idea who it is that we're raising. At every stage, just as you look at pictures of your children and then you see the child I have today is no longer the child that I'm looking at as a toddler. The teenager doesn't look anything like the baby. And likewise, we are revealing more and more of our abilities. So it's a tremendous opportunity, privilege, and awesome obligation to parent another human being into reaching their full potential. Hmm. That is true. And then that it brings to another question. Every child is so unique. 
So how I feel like there's so many parenting tools out there and then how you apply those tools. They may all be good. They may all be true, but exactly how to apply them to each individual child. That is a challenge because we are all a world unto ourselves. Every child is so unique. Any advice you have for how to recognize the unique nature of each child and bring, you know, tailor make your parenting skills for that child? Leora, I'm not an expert. However, I take this job so seriously, as I'm sure that all of your listeners are as well. So this is what I am saying from my own perspective. I think at the very get-go, a person has to realize that we have a mission in this world and a purpose. You can't go through life without a direction, without any kind of gauge, and without any kind of reason. So I think the first step is to recognize that all of us belong to families, we belong to communities, nations, and each of us have unique, I believe, God-given skills and destinies and purposes. As a Jewish woman, and as a Torah-observant Jewish woman, I felt it was paramount for me to find a way that I could model and teach God awareness to my children, not only every day, but throughout the day. So if you recall, when we'd go for walks, I would find opportunities to you know, make you aware of something that you may just walk by and not notice. God is in this flower. This is an expression of godliness. Look at this leaf. We have this concept in Hebrew, olam, from the Talmud, the world was created for me, not meaning that we should be narcissists and use the world, but that everything in the world is to teach us a lesson. It's like a spiritual text message that is just for you to learn. And everybody can see the same thing and hear a different and feel a different message. So that was another part of it, to at every age level, to Give your child an opportunity to expand what they think they see, to look beneath the surface and to also look beyond themselves to recognize that there is more to the world than just their own perspective Mm -hmm. and to create opportunities where this can be a part of your daily ritual. And the truth is, since every child is unique and is different and we respond and we react and we reflect each child, every child reflects differently um, through us, off of us. Um, as we're talking about also parenting ourselves, that every child is another opportunity to, we have to adapt ourselves, we have to work on ourselves, we have to uplift ourselves, we have to change our perspective and understanding this is a whole, this child is a whole unique world with an op- unique opportunities for me to be parenting myself while I'm parenting this child with their unique needs. And it's, it's part of our own journey of parenting ourselves, I'd say too. It definitely Absolutely. is. Absolutely. But the God awareness piece, that's also something else. We talk about gratitude. I, I, as you're talking about it, it's very, very true. One of the things I, I always sensed is, I thank God we went, I went to a very good school. I had a very good religious education. At the same time, you did not just rely on the school for my religious education, my God awareness, my spiritual education. There was always a part of me that needed more, needing maybe something a bit different. And you were amazing at supplementing my education recognizing that I had more needs and you took me to more classes and to different teachers, even outside paying outside classes outside the school to do that supplementing of the education, which I also think is very, very unique, recognizing different children have different natures and not necessarily just relying on a system to educate a child. You were very involved in our education. Thank you. Um, First of all, every parent realizes that they cannot expect to create a carbon copy of themselves, meaning that your child may have a very different character, different temperament, different skill set. Everything could be so different than you. You'll think, where did this child come from? But one thing that we have to make sure, at least I, I felt this way, that, yes, I am here to parent and to help my child who may not be exactly like me and not may not be who isn't exactly like me. And in every family, you have children that are more like you or even opposites of you, whatever it is, it's the job of the parent to find avenues and to have a lot of tools. If one way doesn't work, then a parent has to constantly be finding different avenues to engage their child, just like a good teacher. And also, I think it was helpful that I am a teacher. That's true. Because I, 
you know, I was constantly refining my teaching skills and then coming home and doing it again at home. And home was the most important of my classrooms. But nevertheless, this is my point. To instill within our children a sense of purpose and mission, that the world goes beneath the surface and goes way beyond just their own personal interests and needs. And to try to instill in your child to become a player, not just to be a spectator, to bring to the table during dinner and whatever bonding experiences that you can create with your child, that we're living in a family, which is living within a community and a nation and a global community. What do you think your role is in trying to create more good in the world? And also as a Jew, no matter how your child may be different than you, that you should instill in each child that they have a role in the chain of Jewish future and destiny. Hmm. That's very powerful. And I definitely sense that you instilled that, that within us. One final question for people from parents and children where there needs to be an a sense of improvement in the relationship. Any advice that you have on how a parent can try to improve the relationship with their child? Yes. I was just discussing this with your brother. It's so essential to play with your child at every age. I think in order for us to want to bring our child up to the next level or to make them become more, in a sense, ready to take some of your ideas into their into their consideration, first we have to meet them where they are and interface with your child, play with them, love them, do something they like, and then they'll be more inclined to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mom, this has been such an amazing opportunity, so special for me and so much wisdom. I know I've learned from you over the years. I'm so glad you could share your wisdom with others. I want to wish you all a happy, meaningful, uplifting Mother's Day. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel, plus little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page and don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.